What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an extension for SketchUp that's supposed to be able to use AI in order to actually create models in the program. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is a tool from Alex Schreier. You might have heard of Alex before. He was, he's a professor at the University of Massachusetts. He's also written a couple SketchUp books. Um, Alex is a really smart guy, and uh, he's usually kind of on the cutting edge of what um, add-ons can do and other things like that. And you can see with some of the videos that he's come out with lately that he's been um, playing around with Trimble Creator and creating parametric models, other things like that. Um, this is another add-on that he's created. Um, I did want to note, by the way, that he has just rolled out the new version of architectural design with SketchUp, which is his book um, talking you through the SketchUp workflows for architectural design of SketchUp. Um, this book is interesting to me because it really um, talks a lot more about like workflows and different ways that people are using SketchUp. Um, so it gives you some pretty good ideas for how people are using like point clouds and other things like that. So um, it's a really good overview. Um, if you don't have a copy, of this. This is a great reference book for different SketchUp workflows. Um, it's probably not as like nuts and bolts as like SketchUp for dummies or something like that, but it's a little more practical in the sense that it does talk about those workflows. But I will link to that in the notes down below. But specifically in this video, I wanted to talk about OpenAI Explorer. So OpenAI Explorer is his SketchUp extension designed to try to help us use artificial intelligence in order to start doing generation of different things inside of SketchUp models. So this is actually the second version of this that he's created. And I just wanted to kind of try it out, look at some of the limitations, other things like that. You can get this in the Sketchication plugin store. I do recommend that you read through this um, just to get kind of an idea of the way that this works. And so one thing to be aware of is this is using OpenAI API access, meaning you're going to have to get an API key, which means you are going to have to sign up on OpenAI's website. And so just be aware that when you sign up for this, you're gonna get a certain number of tokens that this is going to use um, in order to generate all of this. At a certain point, you do run out of tokens and there's a cost after that. I'm not really sure I understand um, the number of tokens that you get in there for free. So far, everything I've done with this, I've not used up all of those free tokens, but just be aware that you are going to have to sign up with OpenAI and you are going to have to get that API key for this to work. And so basically the way this works is you install the extension in SketchUp, right? So OpenAI Explorer right here. And um, within the settings, you wanna come in here and you want to enter your API key. Obviously, I'm gonna gray mine out right here, but you can get your own just by signing up over on uh, OpenAI's website. Um, note that you get a certain number of credits before OpenAI is going to start charging you for that, so just be aware of that. Um, I think you get a fair amount of credits before you really need to worry about that. Um, the other thing I would say is just make sure that in your chat completion model, just make sure that it says GPT-3.5-Turbo in here, um, so that that's how I was able to get this to work on my computer. You can set what the system prompt is when this pops up, but it's not really that big of a deal. Now, one other thing to be aware of, so this tool is using AI to try to generate Ruby code, right? So it's the code that um, plugins or extensions are built on inside of SketchUp. So one thing, depending on what you're trying to do, you may want to set this to execute code no. What that means is that means that this will generate code, but it won't actually try to run it. And then you could like copy paste it into the Ruby um, box. But let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at the way that it works. So we're gonna go to extensions, open AI, AI Explorer, and we're going to click on this button right here to pop up the dialogue. Okay, and so basically what this is, is this is a window to Chad GPT inside of SketchUp. And so what we wanna do is ask it to do something. And so let's say we say create a box and hit enter. What that's gonna do is that's going to tell it to generate the concise Ruby code and it's going to generate the box right here. And, and so that's pretty cool. It actually came in here and it de defined the dimensions um, of the box and then it wrote code that basically generated the box, right? So um, basically this is something where if you were to take this, right, and copy it. So I'm gonna go to copy, we're gonna go to developer, Ruby console. I'm gonna paste this in here. And so I don't know why it won't let me make this any bigger. That's uh, really clunky. And so we could take this and we could rerun this code, 
right? So we could set the length, the width, and the height, all the 10, and hit the enter key, and it's going to generate that box again. So basically, this is just making code, and then it's executing it. And so I will be the first to tell you that as someone who is not a Ruby developer, um, this is really interesting to me. And so let's say that we try to get more specific though. That's where things get weird. So if we were to type in create a four inch by four inch box, I guess it would be four inch by four inch by four inch. And we run this, it's going to take this and it's going to generate a box with those dimensions like this. So four inch, four inch, four inch. All right, so that's pretty cool. It's actually like figuring out how to create, um, it, it's figuring out how to write this code without us having to know how to do that. So now let's make it a little bit more complex. So let's, let's say we wanna create an array of 16, four inch by four inch by four inch boxes. So if I hit enter, you can see how it doesn't. Well, it kind of does that, I guess. And so this is kind of the first thing to be aware of is if you're not specific, what this actually did, notice how if I drag over top of this is it created 16 boxes, but they're all in the same location. So it did technically create an array right here, but it didn't create an array where the boxes are kind of uh, moved apart from each other. So let's try this again, but let's say, let's say we create an array of 16 four inch by four inch by four inch boxes spaced eight inches from each other and run it again. And so what it's gonna do is it's going to do what we told it to do with these boxes. And again, it's doing it with Ruby script. And so this is pretty cool, right? It's coming in here and it's creating this array of boxes. Now, where where things start getting a little bit weird is as you start asking for more complex things, right? So let's say we were to say randomly move the selected boxes up or down a distance between one and three inches. So if we run this, it's going to create a, a Ruby script that is supposed to move these up and down on the Z axis. And so even though it came in here and it generated code in here, it didn't actually do what we asked for. And so sometimes what we can do is we can adjust our prompt. So if I was to adjust this and say move the selected boxes up or down randomly, and then rerun this, this is gonna go back through and it's going to try again. And so notice how it was actually able to do that just based on the fact that we changed the prompt. And this is one of the things that people talk about a lot with AI generated models is the way the prompt is worded is going to be really important. But the problem is I just moved one word over here and now suddenly this is working. So it gets kind of weird having to like try a bunch of different things in order to do this. That being said, I actually really like um, the fact that it's actually working and doing what I'm asking it to do. So that is pretty cool. And so Alex has a list of prompts that he's tried over on his website. And so there, there are different things that it can do and different things that it can't do. This is something where AI is still kind of learning and generating and getting better. Um, but let's say, for example, that we wanted to color these. So let's take his prompt right here. We're gonna go to copy and we'll say color the items in the select. And we'll say that we wanna color the items in the selection randomly in five different green tones. So it's gonna go through and it's gonna randomize the color of these boxes, just like this. And so you can see how these are different tones of green. And so this actually wrote a script that's going to randomly color these boxes based on the different colors that it's generated up here. And so let's try something else. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, create a grid of four inch by four inch boxes spaced at eight inch on center We'll actually say create a grid of 24 
four inch by four inch by four inch boxes spaced at eight inches on center. So if I click on go, it's going to generate code that actually does that, or it's going to try to. And so you can see that that came in here and created that grid of boxes that we asked for. And so sometimes you can give it prompts that are a little too complex. So let's say that we say select the boxes that were just generated. Click on go. Notice how it gives you an error, right? So um, it doesn't know what the boxes that were just generated are, so it can't really select them in here. So there is a limit to what this can do. And um, I think what you're gonna have to do is you're just gonna have to kind of like trial and error your way through this. Now, one thing that gets a little bit interesting is if you go into your settings, right, the first thing that it's doing is it's being told to generate concise SketchUp Ruby code. If we were to delete that out and click on OK, and then come back in here and run this and type in describe SketchUp and click on go, it's not going to try to generate code because we didn't tell it to try to generate code. It's actually going to generate a description of SketchUp right here. And so really what this is, is this is a window to chat GPT directly inside of SketchUp. So you can tell it to generate code, but you can ask it questions and do other things in here as well. So it's almost just like an open prompt to ask chat GPT what you want. All right. And so a couple quick thoughts about this. So um, first off, whether you like it or not, artificial intelligence is here and it's going to continue getting integrated into different tools that we use. Um, I know a lot of people talk about it from an ethical standpoint and all of that. And I think those are valid discussions. At the same time, I do think it's valuable for us to be educated on the possibilities because like it or not, it's not going away. Um, so from a practical standpoint, um, I would say that this is only as good as as the code that it spits out the first try right now in the sense that like I don't know enough about Ruby script to fix it if it doesn't work right so sometimes it's going to spit out code that works and that's great and it can make your life a lot easier sometimes it spits out code that throws an error and you have no clue what it's trying to do if you don't know anything about Ruby then you're not going to be able to fix that so I don't think this is necessarily a replacement for that technical knowledge at least at the moment um, but I do think it gives us some kind of interesting possibilities in the future. Um, I do think this gets us closer to a place where people can just describe what they want. And then the tool actually um, does a pretty good job of generating that for us. So I think that is definitely a good thing. Um, at the moment, I don't see this being anywhere near replacing people that write code or anything like that. But I do think that it is an area where as the technology gets better, um, you're going to have less and less errors and be able to do more and more. So I'm interested to see where this goes. I will be following Alex because he kind of stays on kind of the cutting edge of this kind of stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of see what he says as well. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about AI and specifically this tool for using AI to generate Ruby scripts? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.